Hello, wonderful person. And, well, did you know that Uranus might actually get a new ring soon? Ha, 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 ha. Enjoy the joke. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Uranus, which is a more correct pronunciation of this beautiful planet. And we're going to be talking about how, in the next few million years, it might actually get a lot more rings than it currently has. Anyway, welcome to What The Man. So the year is 1986, and this is the only time we ever actually got to visit Uranus. Back when Voyager 2 spacecraft passed by it, took a few pictures, told us that it actually has things like rings, 13 specifically, and uh, quite a lot of moons, 27 specifically. Actually, back then we didn't know about the all 27 moons, but we, were, we knew that there were quite a lot here. And uh, it kind of just left and never came back. Ever since then, we had to use Hubble telescope to study Uranus and uh, try to discover as much about it as we can because it has a lot of weird stuff going on here, including the fact that uh, it's actually orbiting on its side. You can see the moons are actually sideways and so is the rotation of the planet. Now, today I wanted to talk about this new research from uh, August or September of 2017 that talks specifically about what's going to happen to some of the moons of Uranus in the next uh, one to possibly five to maximum 100 uh, million years from now. So it turns out that there's a moon here called Cressida, and I'm gonna try to find it, there it is. And don't forget that all of the moons here are actually named after Shakespearean characters, or actually most of the moons are named after Shakespearean characters, and so this is one of them. And uh, this moon is actually causing quite a lot of disturbance in the current rings of uh, Uranus and it's creating a kind of a, almost like a triangular shape because of its orbit. Well, it's not a super triangle, it's just slightly more triangular than usual in the rings of um, Uranus. And because of this, we were able to measure its mass and its density and we found out that it actually exerts quite a lot of um, gravity, gravitational pull, on the moons near it. And using uh, various simulations and calculations, the scientists from University of Idaho uh, and Wellesley College found out that, well, apparently, this moon is actually very likely going to collide with another moon. And specifically here, uh, it's going to be either Desdemona, which is right there, or it's possible that Desdemona is going to collide with another moon called Juliet. So there's definitely going to be a collision between these moons and what happens when this collision occurs is that, well, let's just simulate this. We're going to slow down time a little bit. Um, when this collision occurs, these moons are going to fall apart and create a completely new, uh, completely new ring. And possibly just one or possibly several rings but it's going to be a really thick and really large ring that's going to start orbiting around Uranus now I don't know if I can see it I think the easiest way to do this is to actually just manually add another series of rings to Uranus so there we go so they're going to kind of explode well not explode but fall apart because of the collision and create these rings and there's actually a few other moons that uh, are possibly going to do this. So one of them is called Belinda that's right there. And another one is actually not in the simulation because this is using the older model. There is another moon called Cupid that orbits very, very close to Belinda. And we can maybe place it somewhere here. Essentially the same fate awaits Belinda. It's going to disappear and create a bunch of rings. Now, all of this will not happen anytime soon, of course. This will probably occur sometime in the next uh, million or a few million years, possibly even 100 million years. But by then, uh, the, un the, our, the solar system will, will have changed very little. So Uranus will actually become the slightly more ringed planet compared to what it is now. And even though it does have quite a lot of moons right now, I guess it's going to be a tragedy that is going to lose some of those moons to these collisions. But the irony is, th is that uh, a lot of these characters are actually from various Shakespearean tragedies. So there's just a bit of interesting uh, coincidence in there. But oh no though, what's interesting about Uranus is that it doesn't really have a very stable moon system and how it 
got these moons to begin with is actually very, very uh, questionable. So for all we know, it's actually um, something that happened uh, several million or possibly billion years ago when it captured asteroids um, or possibly dwarf planets from from the Kuiper's belt and they fell apart and created the rings and then these rings started uh, falling apart and creating moons and it's sort of like a recycled process. So it's possible that at some point Uranus may have, may have had a lot more moons. So there could have been quite a lot of moons orbiting around uh, Uranus and there they are and then they kind of collided with each other created more rings and recycled the process over and over and over again so this is kind of what's probably happening on Uranus and this is probably what's going to be happening in the next four to hundred million years while these moons are around F but for now that's actually all we know about it and it's an interesting find interesting discovery and it definitely is going to keep us guessing about what's going to happen in the system in the next few million years Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and thank you so much for watching. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.